<laughs> but we love them so much, and we've been looking so forward to tonight. And so without further ado, I just want you to welcome Sister Susan Tomplay as they come tonight and share. Say praise the Lord. Praise glad the Lord. to be in the house of the Lord tonight. Amen. Oh, come on, make some noise for Jesus. Hallelujah. It's wonderful to be here. Amen. I like that. <laughs> You were singing, my heart is yours. That's what I told the Lord a long time ago. When I was 12 years old, I said, Lord, from that day forth, I was filled with the Holy Ghost, began to speak in other tongues, got baptized, just started walking with Jesus, like we say in Ecuador. I told him that day, I said, my life, everything, my heart, it's all yours. Just do whatever you want with me. See, I didn't make no great big plans in my life. I just said, Jesus, it's all yours. Just have your way, Lord. Whatever you want for me, then that's what I want. That is my plan. Amen? And y'all, it's been an amazing life. It's been an adventure. He sent me off to the jungle, the Amazon rainforest. I said, woohoo! praise God. I'm an adventure. I love it. I love it. I'm so glad to be here with you tonight. Thank you, Pastor Rob, Pastor Shanda. You've been so faithful. Fireplace Fellowship for about seven years now. Faithful partners of ours in this work that we are doing with the Indians in Ecuador. And I'm so excited to be here with you again. It's been two years since the last visit. Brother Charles was not here, so I'm glad that he's got the opportunity to be here tonight with us. I love the Lord. There's a scripture in the Word of God that says, Psalm 27 and 4, David said, One thing. Have I desired of the Lord? That's it. That's all I want. I, I don't need nothing else. One thing have I desired of the Lord, and that will I seek after, he said, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord. Now, I love church. Oh, it's fun. We have a good time. Amen. But Pastor Rob, y'all ever get excited and dance a little bit around here? Oh, yeah. Oh, that's church. All right. I love it. But I think David wasn't saying, hey, I just want to go live in, in, in a church. I think what he was saying is there's only one thing I want. I desire more than anything to be in the presence of the Lord. That's all I want, to be in his presence. Well, why? Amen. Well, why? Because in his presence is fullness of joy. In his presence, there is healing. In his presence, there is salvation. In his presence, there is deliverance. When we get in his presence, it begins to change us. Amen. Do you want to be in his presence all the days of your life hallelujah I love it hallelujah I want to be in his presence hallelujah tonight I would love to show you some pictures and share some testimonies if you will allow me to and I want you to praise the Lord with me I want you to worship the Lord some of the children some of the churches we've been going to say oh we're gonna see a movie no, please, don't, don't pull out the popcorn and coke and all that. No, no. I want to praise the Lord. That's what we want to do. Will you praise him with me tonight? Amen. Brother Charles, let's get started. Clap your hands for Jesus real good one time. Yeah, go ahead and do that. Real good for Jesus. Amen. Y'all know that we have four beautiful churches in the Amazon jungle in four different communities. This is beautiful Tallinn Church. We built it six years ago. In these communities, there's no electricity, no running water. And so we've just been having church just old fashioned, just praising the Lord a cappella style and just having a good time. Amen. But I'm so excited that I can testify this church and the Puyupungo Church. Before we left in April to come to the States, we obtained electricity in both of those churches. I'm excited about that. Yes. Now, wh what does that mean? We're going to have air conditioning in the church? No. <laughs> that won't be happening. Well, what about beautiful chandeliers like this? And I love that. No, that won't be happening either. It means we've got three tiny little light bulbs in each one of those churches. But it also means that we can stay all night long and have Holy Ghost Church just as long as we want to now. Hallelujah. We're excited about electricity. Hallelujah. Well, Charles' little wife, Sister Jenny, she started coming to our Tallinn church, y'all. She fell in love with Jesus, and then I just don't know. Some reason or another, she fell in love with Brother Charles, and they got married. <laughs> 
Well, Sister Jenny is a beautiful woman. She's precious, beautiful spirit. She loves the Lord. She and I were invited to go and speak to a Quechua Indian family. Now, where we live, y'all know, there's so much witchcraft. So there's not people that just knocking our doors down saying, tell me about Jesus. We want to know Jesus. It's just not happening like that. The folks we have in our church, we have worked hard. We have labored hard. We have fasted. We have cried. We have prayed. So we are proud of these souls. Amen. But somebody asked us to come and tell them about Jesus. Oh, we're excited. Sister Jenny and I, we get on a bus, take a bus for a little while. Then we walk about an hour on this gravel road. Then we rode in the canoe for a little while. It was this day. And then we had to walk about 30 more minutes on a tiny, muddy trail. We finally arrived to the home of Freddie and Delia. And their home was made of bamboo, a palmetto roof, a mud floor. And that's their family. They were so excited that we had come to their home in the jungle to tell them about Jesus. Freddie began to tell me a story. He said, Sister Susan, we're so happy that you're here. We wanted to do something very special for you and Sister Jenny. We wanted to prepare you a special meal. And so that was so nice. I mean, there's so much poverty where we live to give to us. That was so nice that they wanted to bless us that way. So Freddie said, last night, I went out fishing all night long. I'm out there trying to find some fish, catch something for y'all. I just didn't have any luck, he said. So I've been out there all night awake. I'm tired. This morning I was coming home and I'm exhausted and I got empty hands. Nothing for the missionaries. So he said, as I was walking on that last piece of tiny mud trail right close to our house, he said, there it was. Right in front of me, ran across the trail, nothing more, y'all, than a big old rat about that size. It's called Watusa in Quechua. He said, I saw that rat and I thought, there it is. That's Sister Susan and Sister Jenny's lunch. And so he killed that rat for us and brought it home to Sister Delia. And there's no stove and nothing like this. There ain't no baked, ain't no big bread and southern fried, nothing like that. I mean, just cooked over an open fire. Uh, what do you like a campfire, Brother Charles says? Bald. Bald rat was our special lunch that day and bald green bananas. I'm pretty sure I got the head on my plate there. Y'all look at that. I'm pretty sure. Think about it. No mayonnaise, no ketchup, no salt, no A1 steak sauce. But you know what I told Jesus when I was 12 years old? Lord, I will do whatever you want me to do. I will, Lord. And to win a soul, I was willing to eat ball rat and ball green bananas. And you know what? It was worth it because Delia and her children are now coming to the Puyo Pungo Church, serving the Lord, walking with Jesus. Look at her right there in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. It's worth it. She came and visited right after that, visiting her home. She was in that service with us. She just cried and cried in the presence of the Lord. She didn't know nothing was going on. It's her first time in a church like this. After that service, she said, Sister Susan, and she can't hardly stand still. She said, Sister Susan, I can't even explain it. I just don't know how to say this. But all I can say is today, I felt something that I have never felt before in my whole life. She said, I was floating in the air today. Hallelujah. That's Jesus, y'all. That's Holy Ghost power. You believe in Holy Ghost power here at Fireplace? Hallelujah. I'm thankful. Ball, rat, and green bananas for the glory of God. Hallelujah. Can you say glory a Dios? Glory to God. Come on, Brother Charles. This is Jeremias and Clelia. Jeremias and Clelia are a young couple who just started coming to our Puyo church. As many people, we notice that they're coming to church. They don't know anything about the Lord, so obviously they don't own a Bible. It's so common to see families who don't have Bibles. Um, many people, uh, when they earn money, they're going to buy necessities, food for their families. So Hedemias and Clelia were coming. We thought, we need to buy them a Bible. So we bought a Bible. It was a surprise. We presented it to Hedemias one night in the church. Hey, Pastor, let me borrow your Bible there for a second. Yeah. Presented it to Hedemias. Just put it in his hand. So here's a Bible for you, for your wife. I want you to serve the Lord. Read this word. He grabbed that Bible. He just stood there. He was stunned. He couldn't even say thank you. He was just overwhelmed by it. And he just all of a sudden, and I, I just get a little emotional when I start talking about this word of God. Head at me and started saying, I have a Bible. I have my own Bible. 
And he just kept saying it over and over. I have a Bible. See, it doesn't move a lot of people here in the States. Because many of us own five, ten of them. Just throw them around the house, right? Oh, because, see, there's too many other modern technology. We got television. We got radio. We got I this and that and the other. Whatever you think, a pad, phone, tablet, all those. No. And we spend all the week on that. And then it comes time for church on Sunday. Uh-oh. Pastor Rob going to be mad if I don't have my Bible. Uh-oh. Where'd I put it? Where'd I put it? Isn't that the truth? Then show up at church. Hey, hey, Pastor. I got my Bible. <laughs> uh-huh. But I ain't read it all week. Isn't that the truth? But Hedemias knows it's a treasure. And he knows if we just open up the pages of that book, oh, the Lord will begin to speak to us through the pages of that wonderful book. Somebody asked me the other night, one of the children said, uh, uh, one of the teenagers at one of the church said, hey, Sister Susan, you got an iPhone? First of all, I said, I live in the jungle, y'all. <laughs> then secondly, I said, no. I don't have an iPhone, but you know what I do have? I have a Bible. I have a Bible, and I've got all the direction I need in that book right there. If I just open it up, hallelujah. Do you have a Bible? Pick it up real quick. Pick it up real quick with me. Oh, look at this, Pastor Rob. Look at how many don't have their Bible tonight, huh? <laughs> no, just hold it up and say, thank you, Jesus. That I have my own Bible. I can read any time of day or night, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Clelia, his beautiful wife there. She was praying in the Puyo church. She had her hands raised up to the Lord. She was in the presence of the Lord, talking to Jesus. All of a sudden, she just grabbed her arms like this. And she just looked real disturbed as she started speaking to her husband. So I just quietly went over. Other people were worshiping. And, and I just said, hey, is everything okay? And Clelia said, Sister Susan, she said, I was praying. I was talking to Jesus. I had my arms up. Will you help me, Sister Shanda, raise your arm? Just raise your arm up right there. Clelia said, and as I was talking to the Lord, all of a sudden, somebody put their hand on my arm. And she said, and then it was just like they just began to lovingly stroke my arm right there in the church. She said, I thought it was you, Sister Susan. And I turned around and looked, and there was nobody there. Oh, I said, Clelia, we tell you all the time, Jesus is here. Jesus, Jesus is here. And tonight he has shown you he's really in this place. He's alive and he's pleased with your worship. Jesus is here. Hallelujah. Clearly, I began to weep more and say, thank you, Jesus. Look at our beautiful children, Saira, Alejandra, and Linda in the Puyupungo church. We went to pick these girls up one day. We go pick up many of the children for church, many of the adults. We arrived at their home. It's like 15, 20 people out in front of this home. Oh, and it's just a big old commotion going on out there. It's loud and all kind of carrying on. We saw four or five men real drunk on this wine that they make down there, the Indians do. Even called the police to come out and control the whole situation going on in the middle of the jungle. We pulled up and said, oh, Jesus, they're not going to get to go to church today. Oh, just a couple minutes after that, run from behind that house. These three little girls right here, they come running. They got big smiles on their faces, and they said, we are going to church. You know what that meant? We don't want none of this, what's going on here. See, we done found something so much better. So today, we are going to church. Hallelujah. Are you glad to be in church tonight? Hallelujah. And then they come, and they get in the presence of the Lord and cry and weep. That touches this missionary's heart. Hallelujah. Beautiful Yantana Church. I don't know if I told this story the last time I was here, but let me share this for the ones that are new. This is uh, in the Shuar Indian community. We started to work in a home there, and then we felt impressed of the Lord to go ahead and build the church. So we started looking for land. And we went to different families asking if anybody wanted to sell a piece of land so we could build the church. We went to one home, Shuar woman there. She said, lady, she said, y'all are white people. This is a Shuar community. We don't want you white people in this community, and we certainly don't want your church in this community. <sighs> you know what? Y'all think we got all sad and tore up about it and discouraged? You know what? Charles and I left there, we had big old smiles on our faces because we said, devil, you're so stupid. 
You just gave it away. You just confirmed right there that this is the Lord's will for us to build this. Amen. So we just left there smiling. Somebody going to sell to us. We went on to another family. Betty at her house. Betty said, oh, yes, ma'am. I've got two pieces of land, and you can pick whichever one you want, and you can build your church. Amen. That's right. So we built that church. That's good, but it gets gooder. Amen. <laughs> we built that church on that piece of land. A couple years later, we've been in the church. We're having service. It's going great. Betty still ain't serving the Lord. She's the one that sold us the land. Betty shows up one day. She says, Sister Susan, I want to tell you a story. Tell me, Betty. She said, many years ago, before I ever even knew you, before you ever came to my community, she said, I had a dream. Betty, don't know nothing about Jesus now, y'all. Betty said, I had a dream, and in my dream, I saw that piece of land. And she said, and flying over it, I saw this huge white dove just flying over that piece of land right there. And then I heard a voice out loud say, one day, Someone will build a house for my name on that piece of land. Hallelujah. Jesus confirmed it a long time ago. He ordained it and the devil had to obey it. Amen. Hallelujah. Beautiful Yantana Church. Hallelujah. I'm excited. Some more of our beautiful children praising the Lord. We get in there and we just dance and, and cry and worship. We just let Jesus have his way. Hallelujah. Little Cecil, she's in the red shirt there on the end, y'all. She asked me one day, it's about 5 o'clock in the evening. She says, Sister Susan, you ever get hungry? I was ashamed when she asked that question, y'all. I've never missed a meal in my life. It's like 5 o'clock in the evening. I said, what do you mean, Cesar? Have you had lunch? She said, no, ma'am. Have you had breakfast? She said, no, ma'am. See, that's not uncommon where we live. It's 5 o'clock in the evening. She said, Sister Susan... Sometimes I get so hungry that my belly starts hurting and it hurts me so bad that I just feel like I'm going to throw up. We don't ever get that hungry, do we? Many people, while I miss one meal, what happened? Oh, my goodness. Go to shaking because the sugar's dropping. Got a headache. Uh-oh. And some of us get grouchy. Oh, you can't be a witness for Jesus like that, right? But they'll come into that church not having eaten all day long, sometimes even the day before because there's no food in the home. And they'll walk in that church and we've taught them when they come in, as soon as they walk in, say, Gloria a Dios. They'll walk in, they'll say, Gloria a Dios. And they are ready to worship from that moment. And they begin to pray. They begin to cry. They begin to talk to Jesus. Some of them dance and sing. And we just have Holy Ghost Church. We'll go on two, three hours. And then when we get finished, Brother Charles will go take a load of them home to their community. Come back to pick up the rest. And guess where they are? In the altar, wanting to be in the presence of Jesus all over again. And nobody ain't mentioned, oh, what are we going to have? to eat when we get home tonight nobody ain't even thought about that lord give us that kind of desire we went to a church the other day brother charles and i the man that was in charge of us and please I, don't be offended i'm not speaking badly of anyone the man that was in charge of us he came up brother charles 10 o'clock service he said hey listen during service i want you to think about where y'all want to go eat after church that's what he said during service Okay, we had service, it's beautiful. Pastor ain't no more said dismiss. Guess what? That man's standing right next to Brother Charles. He said, hey, did you think about where you want to go eat? What do you think? Do you think that his mind was on the Lord? Do you think that he was in the presence of the Lord that morning? Then Lord, give us a desire like those children, amen, to want to be in your presence all the days of our life, hallelujah, and not thinking about everything else that's going on. Maybe some of you tonight are already thinking about, hmm, I got some good, some of this in the, in the uh, oven I'm going to have after service. Maybe you're thinking, well, I'm going to go eat it. I don't even, Applebee's or whatever's around here, I don't even know. I just want to be in the presence of the Lord. That's what I want, amen. Anybody else with me tonight? Yes, hallelujah. I love their worship. Praise the Lord. This is Angel, y'all. We baptized Angel. I believe this was around January, February. Y'all look at that beautiful, crystal clear water that we walk in. Hallelujah. Muddy water. Hey, you know this, Sister Shanda. Huh? Muddy water that contains who knows what. Boa, anaconda, piranha. You just don't know. Hallelujah. 
You just walk in in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I said, I can't tell you how many times I've been in that water. Oh, and I felt something around my feet. Oh, I think that's when Jesus says, hey, piranha, you go find your lunch somewhere else today. Amen. Hallelujah. We fixing to get some sins washed away. Amen. Hallelujah. I do believe it. We baptized on hell. We baptized. You clap your hands. That's all right. Anytime. Amen. That's right. See, because I'm praising Jesus and I just can't stop. Amen. Hallelujah. Clap your hands real good. I just can't stop it. Hallelujah. It's good. Not too long ago in the service, Ang Hill told us, he said, I want to testify to the church. It was after the service. He said, I was trying to pray tonight. He said, I was trying to raise my hands up to the Lord. He said, but I just couldn't. He said, they were so heavy. He said, it was literally like I had some kind of weight on my arms. They were so heavy, and I just couldn't get them raised to worship the Lord. He said, that weight was as if it were chains that were on my arms. Now, see, you got to understand, we're in the middle of the jungle. These people don't understand um, church terminology, let me say. So Angel didn't really know what he was talking about. He just said that's what it was like. I had chains on my arms, and I couldn't worship, and I couldn't praise and get in his presence. And he said I was struggling so hard, but those chains were so heavy. What Angel didn't know, see, is that we saw him struggling. And as pastors, we went over. And we began to pray and say, in the name of Jesus, come out of him. Set him free. See, there's so much witchcraft where we are. That night, we cast out about 35 devils from that man. And so he was standing there testifying. Those chains were so heavy. But something happened to me in the service. He didn't realize it, amen. And he said, and now I want to tell the church that I can raise my hands all the way up because those chains are gone. Hallelujah. Those chains are gone. See, that's the word of God. The word of God says, he that believes and is baptized shall be saved. But don't stop there. It says, and these signs shall follow them that believe in Mark 16. Amen. He said, in my name, they'll cast out devils. They'll speak with new tongues. They'll lay hands on the sick. Many things there. Amen. That's what we're doing in Ecuador for the glory of the Lord. After all, hell testified about that. Y'all probably going to laugh at me, though. There's a song that I learned last year when I was here in the States. I heard one line of this song. Churches were singing it everywhere. Heard one line of the song. And I, that's all I wanted. I, that's it. I'm, I'm going to remember that line. I'm taking that back to Ecuador. We're going to sing that in Spanish. I don't need the rest of the song. I just want that one line. And so I took that back to Ecuador. We sing a cappella. So I don't even think I sang the same melody. But when he testified about that, we started singing that song. And that's pretty much become our theme. And that chorus goes like this. There is power in the name of Jesus. And you just let me sing it in the Holy Ghost because I don't, I don't even know the right melody. There is power in the name of Jesus. I pull dead in el nombre de Jesus. And what does it do, people? It breaks every chain, breaks every chain, it breaks every chain. Oh, you better let me sing it and help me worship. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name. Oh, say it, say it. Jesus, Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. That breaks every chain. Breaks every chain. It breaks every chain. For Angel, yes, clap your hands to Jesus. My Lord, I feel Holy Ghost in this place. Jesus breaks chains. Jesus sets free. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
This man that was so involved in witchcraft, that believed superstition, that was the community drug, has now been set free. The chains are broken, and he's now the community preacher walking around telling everybody what Jesus has done. That Jesus has broken chains for him. Hallelujah. That's what he does. Can you sing it with me one more time? There is power in the name. Oh, Jesus. Yes, there is. There is power, power, power. That's right, sing it, sister. Of oh, Jesus, Jesus. There is power, power in the name. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. That breaks every chain. Breaks every chain. Breaks every chain. Clap your hands if you know it's true. Hallelujah. Power in the name Jesus. Say his name. Hallelujah. Praise God. You can sit down in the Holy Ghost. I've got just a couple more. Hallelujah. Praise God for what he is doing. Hallelujah. Beautiful Gloria received the Holy Ghost back in November, I believe it was. Oh, she had a husband and children that didn't want really anything to know with Jesus. They want nothing about this. How they, all these people raising witchcraft didn't care for Jesus. But Gloria said, I'm not leaving until I get the power of the Holy Ghost in my life. Until I'm speaking in other tongues. And so she did. Amen. The Lord filled her real good. And then her husband came to church and said, I didn't believe this. I didn't believe this before. He said, but now I see the change and the difference in my wife. I know this is real, and I want this Holy Ghost too. Anybody full of the Holy Ghost here? Hallelujah. Yes, praise God. Her beautiful children praying and seeking the Lord. God is changing that family. Hallelujah. That same Gloria, we had a beautiful service one day. Said, Glory, Sister Gloria, testify. I see the Holy Ghost all over you. Oh, you're just glowing in the Lord. Testify, what you, how do you feel in the service? What happened for you? She said, Sister Susan, I want to tell the church that today I just felt chills all over me. Y'all ever feel them Holy Ghost goosebumps? Woo, on your arms, your back. Oh, we just all over you like that. She said, I just felt them starting all the way in my head, going all the way down to my feet. And I felt something happening on the inside of me too. I said, oh, that's Holy Ghost. Uh, Abuelita Rosa, Grandma Rosa in the green shirt. She said, I, I want to testify. She said in that same service, she said, I felt like somebody just took a bucket of water and they just poured that water all down me. Hallelujah. And she just got a good dose of Jesus. Amen. One more man said, I want to testify. He said, but I ain't got but just a couple words to say. He said, I want to tell the church that I felt fire of the Holy Ghost in this place. Hallelujah. Fire of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hey, what, what does the Word of God say? John said, he baptized into repentance, right? But then John said, <laughs> but there's one. He's coming after me. <laughs> and he said, I ain't even worthy. I can't get down and unloose his shoes. And he is going to baptize you with Holy Ghost and fire. Fire. Do you have the fire? Hallelujah. Somebody asked me the other day. Said, hey, Sister Susan, did you just get the Holy Ghost and fire like last week or, or yesterday? Because you sure are a firecracker. I said, no. I got this 33 and a half years ago. But, man, it just gets gooder and gooder and gooder. And I just want more and more and more of Jesus. Amen. Anybody else feel that way? Hallelujah. Oh, I love it. The Lord is good. Hallelujah. Senor Domingo, he's 80 years old. He lives in a community where we don't have a church yet. But we went to visit Senor Domingo. I said, Senor Domingo, I'm talking to him about Jesus. I want him to serve the Lord. He said, I'm 80 years old, Sister Susan. It's too late for me. I can't change. I'm just going to die the way I am. I said, no, no, no. See, there's a saying in Spanish that we have. It says, mientras hay vida, hay esperanza. While there is life, there is hope. Amen. And so, no, no. He said, you don't understand. Let me tell you a story. Senor Domingo said, just a few months ago, somebody came to my home. He said, they came to tell me about Jesus. I don't know who this person was. I don't know them. 
said they brought me a Bible just like yours. Okay, that's good. He said, and I talked to them and I said, well, maybe I will consider changing and serving your Jesus. Now see, he and his wife are in witchcraft. His wife is a witch. He said, maybe I will consider changing. That's all he said. He left them with that. That night, laid down in his bed to go to sleep. He said, I couldn't go to sleep. I was restless. I just couldn't get these eyes closed. And he said, I looked down at the end of my bed. He said, standing at the end of my bed was a giant. He said, just what I saw, it was just, everything was dark. He had on these black clothes, just everything dark about this giant that I was looking at. He said, and that giant had a machete in his hand. And he said, that giant kept repeating to me over and over. He said, I'm going to kill you. I'm going to kill you. He said, I saw that same vision two nights in a row. You know who he saw? Do you know what that was? That was the enemy, right? The devil himself showing himself to that man. And he said, so you see, I can't change. Because if I do, he's going to kill me. Oh, I said, Senor Domingo, see, I know what you saw. See, I serve the living God. And what you saw was just a big, fat devil. And you know what he is? He's just a big, fat liar. Amen? He wants you to be afraid because he don't want you to serve the living God. He don't want you to serve God. Um, ain't but one God. Hallelujah. And he don't want you to serve him. I prayed for Senor Domingo that day, me and Brother Charles. He just kept saying to us over and over, thank you so much. Thank you so much for praying for me. Like there was such a relief that he felt in that moment. Like he knew there's hope. I can be set free. I'm a little bit stubborn, so I just didn't leave it with just that. I saw sitting right next to him his little granddaughter, Rosita, six or eight more of his grandchildren. I said, children, get up. We're going to sing some songs. Guess what I started teaching them? There is power in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Because I said that big fat giant, that big fat liar, he can't stay here. He ain't welcome in this place. Amen. And we would begin to bring in the name of Jesus. What happens then? He's got to go, right? He's got to leave. The enemy cannot stay. Amen. So that day we taught them the name of Jesus. And that song they were singing over and over so that that devil would leave that family, that home that community. Amen. Jesus is so good. He is making himself known to these Indian people who never knew about Jesus before, who worship the sun, who worship the mountains, or who worship witchcraft and the devil. So he is making himself known to them. Hallelujah. That he is God Almighty. Hallelujah. I want to tell you one last story if I can, if you'll let me. There was a little boy. He was eight years old. His name was Santiago. Santiago was the first member of our Puyupungo church. Santiago was the only member for about two months. He was the only, he, he saw that building down there, a little bamboo building, a palmetto roof and a mud floor. And he's curious. He won't know who's them white people, what they done built, what's going on down there. So that little boy walked from his community one hour to the church. Most time, like the other children, he'd not eaten all day long. He walked to that church. He heard us talk about Jesus. He heard us talk about this life for the Lord. He loved it. Oh, this is great. These stories from the Word of God. Daniel and the lion's den. Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego. Oh, he just loved it. So Santiago would walk every time there were service. Bare feet, one hour. It's hot down there. He's sweating by the time he got there. There's no air conditioning when you'd arrive to that church. He'd walk one hour. He'd be in that service with us. We'd sing. We'd pray. We'd teach about the Lord. Then he'd walk one hour to go back home. Can you picture that little boy coming by himself? Just a little bitty boy, eight years old. So we taught Santiago a song in the church. It's an old song I learned years ago. But Santiago loved this song, and he began to sing this song. It goes, I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. 
I have decided to follow Jesus. And his favorite part, no turning back. No turning back. You all know it. Can you picture that little boy walking down the road singing that song? He's hungry. He's hot. He's in bare feet. But he's walking one hour. We'd hear him make that little curve by the church. And we'd say, there's Santiago. He's here today. Kept coming by himself. We taught him a second part of that song. And it said, though none go with me, still I will follow See, that's a mouthful even for an adult to sing. Santiago would say, though none go with me, still I will follow. Though none go with me, a little boy said, still I will follow. He knew he done found something good, amen. No turning back, no turning back. Santiago kept coming. It was almost two months. By himself. He loved that song. Oh, it made this missionary cry to hear that little boy singing that song. About two and a half months into it, here it comes one day. He's walking up to that church, and I hear that song ringing out. But I look that day. Santiago's here, amen? But guess what? Santiago had three cousins with him that day. That's right. That's right. That's right. A couple of weeks later, here comes Santiago, three cousins, two brothers and sisters. A few more weeks later, here's some more of them cousins. Within a few months' time, Santiago won the entire community where he lives to the Lord. Hallelujah! Yes! Just because an eight-year-old boy said, I'll serve the Lord. It don't matter what it takes. I'll serve Jesus. I'll walk with him. I'll follow him. Let me ask you something tonight. If you had had to walk one hour to get here tonight, it's hot outside. Oh, you're going to be stinky by the time you get to church. Ain't nobody going to want to hug you and say, hey, you ain't ate all day long. You're hungry. That belly's talking to you. Your head's hurting. You're in bare feet. And you know there's no air conditioning, no beautiful padded pews when you get here. Let me ask you this. Would you still be sitting on the church pew tonight? That's what Santiago did. I pray that the Lord would give us all a desire like that little boy. I know there's a lot of people who say, oh, Sister Susan, I've been serving the Lord many years. Yes, I'm going to serve him. Well, how about we say, Lord, tonight... I just want to tell you all over again that I do want to follow you. And I will. If I had to ride my bicycle to get here, I'd still be here, Lord. If I had to walk, I'd still be here, Lord. If nobody wants to come with me, I'll still be in the house of the Lord. And I'll still follow you. I wonder if there's anybody that would say that with me. Maybe we could just stand our feet. If that's all right, Pastor, maybe we could just stand our feet for just a few minutes. I know maybe you think, oh, that's, that song's so old-fashioned. That's so, but it's a mouthful. It's not just a children's song. It's a mouthful. I have decided that I'm going to follow the Lord, not just today. That's my commitment. I'm going to go with Jesus. And if nobody else wants to do it with me, guess what? I'm still going to do it. If husband or wife said, I don't want nothing to do with this church no more, would you still come? If your children say, I don't like that, no, -uh, I don't want this no more, would you still come? If mom and dad says, no, we don't want to serve this Jesus no more, would you still serve the Lord? Would you still follow? I wonder if you, if you want to play with me, that would be all right. Can you give me the key of A? And can I just sing just a little bit of that chorus? And I want you, if you would. Just tell the Lord over again today. What is it like, May 28, 2014, Lord? I'm telling you again today, I'm in this for good with you, Jesus. Because there ain't nothing better. Hallelujah. There ain't nothing to go back to. I done found the best there is. Hallelujah. Can you do that with me? 
Can you just let me just kind of sing in the Holy Ghost? And if you would just talk to Jesus, as we say in Ecuador, just close your eyes and talk to Jesus for a minute and think about that. I have decided. Can you let me improvise a little bit? To follow Jesus. Hallelujah. I have decided to follow Jesus. Yes, I'm going to do it, Lord. Not just today, but I'm in this for good. I have decided to follow Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. All right, but how about this part, okay? This is the part I really want you to think on, okay? Though none go with me. Can you close your eyes and just think about that for a minute? Still I will follow. Though none go with me, still I will follow the Lord. Yes, I will. Though none go with me, hallelujah, still I will follow. No turning back, no turning back. Pianist, would you just let us do it just one time a cappella, just the way we do it in Ecuador, okay? Can you just say it one more time? I just want to hear your voices telling the Lord, I'm going to follow you, Jesus. I will. I have decided, tell him, to praise God. Yes, I have. I have decided to Yes, I have, I have decided to follow Jesus, Jesus. No turning back, no turning. Can you say the other part? Though not go. Think about what you're saying. Think about what you're saying. Still I Till I will follow, though none go with me. Hallelujah. Still I will follow the Lord, though none go. If you don't want to go with me, still I, yes, I will, yes, I will. No turning back. No turn. Can we make the devil real mad? Let's just say that last part real loud one more time. No turning back. No, no, no turning back. Can you praise Jesus with me in the house? One minute. Hallelujah. Oh, God bless you, fireplace. I've been blessed tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord Jesus. He's worthy of glory. Thank you, Pastor Shanda. Thank you, Pastor Rob. God bless you, Fireplace. Thank you for being our partners. Hallelujah. In this work for Jesus. Amen. God bless you. Thank you, Lord. Sister Susan, can I just ask you a couple of questions? Uh, now, y'all have, how many churches do y'all have? Over? We, we have four. You have four. And do y'all have, um, let's step right over here because I actually want everybody to see this. Uh, do y'all, you pastor all four of them? Yes. Every Sunday? How do y'all do? We have services six days a week between the four churches. Yes. Every one of those services. Okay. Yeah. And so you and Brother Charles travel to Yes. That's yeah. You know, I wondered that because I knew you had multiple locations. And, and you know, Pastor Shanda and I try to tell our body here about Ecuador and what's going on and the different things that y'all send us. But there's no way to, you know, there's no way to, to show you their heart. And 
ladies and gentlemen, you've seen a heart for Jesus tonight. And you've seen a, an anointing of the Holy Ghost. We talk about that around here, and we're trying to tell you that we are a church full of the Holy Ghost in Hendersonville, Tennessee. And what the Holy Spirit can do in people's lives as we allow Him and just obey what He's called us to do. See, Brother Charles and, and Sister Susan lived right here just like y'all do. And they moved to the jungles of Ecuador because of that calling. Uh, every one of us aren't called to the jungles of Ecuador. Uh, he will use us all. We're all called to be used. But I'm thankful for people that have decided to follow Jesus, not turn back and give their life for these people that you see on this screen tonight. And so we love y'all. Thank you so much. Bless you. Thank you. Y'all can be seated for just a moment. Hey, Amen. Well, you know, I uh, be marrying into the family that I married into. Uh, my father-in-law and uh, mother-in-law and, and then my wife now. Uh, I completely understand the heart of missions now, unlike any other time of my life. And I think that all of you that are a, a part of this body understand our heart for missions and, uh, and what, we, uh, uh, what we believe and what we want to see accomplished around here. And we talk a lot around here about Haiti because that's really a, our major work is what we're doing there out of this church. But of course, Ecuador and the Dominican and where else? Mexico and we can name everywhere. India, of course, India. And so, uh, so many different things. But tonight, I'm so thankful, first of all, that y'all are here because to see Sister Susan and Brother Charles's heart, we can tell you all day long about it but until you see what the Lord is doing through them. And so I want you to get your seed ready tonight. And I want you to sow unlike any other time you have sown. Um, you have our tech book with you? Yeah. And so uh, write a check tonight from us. And uh, I want you to sow your very best. This offering is going to them tonight. This doesn't stay here at this church at all. And so uh, I want you to sow your very best seed. This coming Sunday is Mission Sunday here at the fireplace. It is the first Sunday of each month is Mission Sunday. But I say we kick it off this Wednesday night. Amen. And so get your best, best seed ready. I will tell you this church and please hear me. First of all, we don't use gimmicks here. You either obey God or you don't. That's it. But um, I'm going to tell you something. No better ground could you sow your seed into than this ground. They are boots on the ground doing what God has called them to do. And you are seeing fruit tonight from what He's called them to do on these screens. These beautiful families and children that would have never heard probably the gospel. And so they brought that in. Praise God. Now, I, wanna, I want to challenge this church and everyone here that is a part of this body. And if you're not, welcome. We're glad you're visiting with us tonight. But those of you that are a part of this body and even those that aren't, I want to challenge you as a pastor of this church. You need to write it down if you can't remember to pray for them every day. And I don't say that just to have something to say. Please, pray for them. I mean, God is opening up doors. We mentioned to Sister Susan, and, and at something we'd love to see there is a Bible college, and we've even talked about that. And, uh, and so we would love to see a Bible college start there to plug all these families in that are being saved and start sending them out as evangelists. Amen. And so, uh, but there's so much vision. But you couldn't sow seed any better place but pray for them. Lift them up that the Holy Spirit would continue to keep His hand on them. Amen? I won't buy a show of hands. And if you raise your hand and don't do it, I hope all your teeth fall out of your head. How many of you will promise me you're going to pray for them and you're going to keep them lifted up? I will every day. And I'm telling you I'm going to do it. And so keep them lifted up in what God's using them. Yeah, I didn't mention, if you need an offering envelope for your giving, our ushers have them. You can raise your hands and uh, write to... Uh, well, you want to just make them out to the church, or we'll write them one check 
for everything that comes in tonight. And church, standing before God and you and at this altar, every dime and more is going to them tonight. Okay, so we don't take out expenses. <laughs> God has blessed us and so it's all going to them and more. Amen. Okay. Hallelujah. You ready to sow? Father, thank you for the opportunity tonight. First of all, to be in your presence. Holy Spirit, you're always welcome in this house. I don't even want a pastor if you're not going to be welcome in the house. But you're welcome here. Have your perfect way every time we assemble. And Lord, I just thank you tonight for this precious spirit I feel here. I thank you for Brother Charles and Sister Susan. The work that they're doing. And Holy Spirit, we cover them now. I ask you, Lord, that when they get back off of this trip, that there be such a power of you that these people just fall before they even get to the church. They just feel your mighty presence on those grounds and through these people. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to sow into this ministry and to be a blessing to them. So, Lord, as you supply the need, we will give it to you. We thank you. We praise you. In Jesus' name, we thank you. Amen. Amen. You can sow. Our ushers are going to serve you right now. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Amen. And y'all, y'all built those churches. I mean, y'all built those churches. Just, yeah, they're beautiful. Just beautiful. Amen. Um, I know Sister Shanda, I think, did you talk to Rob today or Josh did? Have they talked to you about shooting a little video for Sunday? Rob, get with her if you would, and please take about a minute. I want her to share with all of our people that aren't here tonight. I want them to get a, a, a little heart of Sister Susan for this Sunday. So let's shoot something with here, her and Brother Charles before they leave, okay? And so uh, we'll have something. And all of you that were here tonight, you can look over at your neighbor and go, you really should have been there Wednesday night. So it was good. <laughs> Amen. All right. You know, I just want to say this in closing. I, um, <clears throat> as I was sitting there, because we talk a lot around here about no condemnation. And you know Jesus didn't come to condemn. The Word tells us that. He came that we might have life and have that life how? More abundantly. Amen. But I was sitting there tonight and I almost felt this rise up in me. That if tonight you feel condemned because you're not doing enough, good. Good. Because church, there's a lot we can do that we don't do. Uh... I'm thankful for the chairs, and I'm thankful for the building, and I'm thankful for the car that brought me here. I am thankful. But we see it in Haiti, just like you see there. People walking five, six hours to get to church. And so, if we're feeling a little condemned good, let's change it. And let's begin to do all that God has called us to do. What He has placed before us. Uh, He's placed Hendersonville before us, so let's take it. Let's take it. Amen? And tell everybody we meet about him. Hallelujah. You can stand, and we'll be dismissed tonight. Is there anything else you want to say? Yes, please. Sister Shanda, for just one moment, please. We appreciate Fireplace Fellowship so much, and we just wanted to oh. give you just a little uh, uh, something for our, to show our gratitude. Amen. Um, you've been partners for seven years now. We appreciate you so much. Oh, We've thank you. Always. My we goodness, please. Well, that is such an honor. Look at that. Wow, thank you. Well, we treasure that. Uh, it, 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 it says the Fireplace Fellowship, supporter of Ecuador Mission since 2007. And so... Uh, it's our honor. It's our honor to do that. And everybody in here does it every month. They do it. You do it. And so we thank you for that. Amen. Okay. Well, I've cried enough. I normally don't cry on Wednesday night. We, we save that for Sundays, but, you know, no, that's not true. <laughs> Amen. Well, Father, thank you for this night. 
and we thank you for your presence. And, and Lord, tonight, one thing we do as a corporate body, we commit ourselves once again to you. Have your way in us. Have your perfect will be done in us. And Lord, as you place the doors before us to go through, we commit we'll go through them. And Lord, we thank you. You will be with us when we walk through them. We praise you and we give you honor and praise in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. You're dismissed. Thank you for coming.